So we're back with Joel, CEO of True Precious Metals. Uh, True, which I like to remind everyone, is sandwiched between the Marathon Gold uh, Valentine Gold Project in the Northeast and Matador Mining's uh, Cape Ray Gold Project in the Southwest. Uh, Joel, great to have you back on. Thanks, Josh. You nailed the uh, explanation and the pitch there in one sentence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I like the the sandwich and the real estate analogy always works for me. So it's uh, it, it's it's fantastic to have you back on. Look, and, and obviously you just put out some some great news, and let's get started with that. You know, you announced uh, new assay results for an additional five holes. I think you're at uh, reporting on 16 holes in total now for your your 2021 campaign. Um, waiting on, I think, I believe the last six holes, but congratulations. I mean, you again, once reported on more gold, which is uh, always fantastic. So my question is this, you know, what do you say about the grades you've been reporting? You know, you're always, uh, I think you've always said, especially that, uh, investors are asking you, are these grades economical? Uh, and, um, you know, they might be trying to compare, or I'd say apples to eggs. So I'm sure you heard this before, but you know, what do you say to that? And, and what do you say to current shareholders and maybe uh, people who are looking at this press release for the first time? I think it's a great question because people get bombarded with numbers, especially if you're investing in junior metal exploration companies. The grades we're getting, I'd say, are comparable to our neighbors at Marathon and Matador. Marathon has a resource base somewhere around, I think, 1.7-ish grams per ton of gold. Uh, so if, you, you know, if you're watching this and you want to keep some numbers in your mind, and uh, Matador has a resource based around two grams per ton gold. So our numbers have been generally around 1.5 to 1.7 grams per ton of gold. Again, it's consistent with our neighbors and Marathon's building a mine based off those numbers. Now, obviously grade, you know, higher grades tend to, is, is better, grade is king. And so we haven't had extremely high numbers. Again, it's, it's fine because it's proven to be worthy of deposits at our neighboring companies to have grades in this kind of area. But as for you know the results, yes, we did hit gold in a couple more holes, which is great. We always want to see more, but I think we're pleased so far with the drilling results and, and the numbers you mentioned are accurate about how far we are through the, the program and rolling out results. And we have 16 holes now public out of 22. Uh, the vast majority at the Woods Lake Gold Zone, which is the known gold area, hit gold. And the grades, are, again, they've been not only consistent with the neighbors, they're also consistent in that zone. So most of the grades there are kind of in the same ballpark. Um, to us, it'd be, it would be great to expand the zone as much as possible. I think we've kind of achieved that so far. It's about 800 meters of strike length. So basically, we've, we've successfully shown there's more gold than was initially thought there. At the same time, it simply was the first target. And so the most, the most obvious to attack on the property, we think there are a whole bunch of other zones like this to be discovered across the property, not based on guesswork, based on, you know, geological exploration we've done over the last year since acquiring the property. So I think this is a good starting point that will kind of cement the, the property as having merit and cement our theory that these, these shear zones, these geological features that run through the property have the potential to host deposits and certainly host gold which we can now say with confidence because we know there's this known one known gold zone on our property. So if we do our job, continue to do our homework and execute on the plan with prudent and systematic exploration, you know, we should uncover more of these over the course of the rest of this year. And now would serve to really build out the value of gold and rose and by extension, true precious metals. Right. So, you know, you've recently announced the 2022, uh, you know, exploration campaign it includes an IP survey and some toil, uh, soil and, and till sampling. So where are we in that, in that process so far? The IP survey is well underway right now. We're getting results on a daily basis from the company. Um, so, you know, we'll certainly look to put out those results because that's it's highly technical, uh, right? It mostly looks like a lot of pretty colors. So, right. you know, we do need time to kind of compile the data we get on a daily basis in order to aggregate a picture that will make sense, not only to ourselves, but also to the market. We will look to put out results probably once or twice over the course of that program. Uh, really the point of that, we did a lot of soil sampling late last year, we're going to be doing a, a blitz this summer. And so the point of this IP survey in the middle of that is how do we firm up drill targets? You know, drilling is the key thing that will move the market for a junior exploration company. And that's really how you, you prove what's under the ground for our company and our project. We've done this soil sampling, which is at the surface. Now we want to get a picture before drilling uh, of, of what we think would be under the ground based on the, these IP anomalies. So we're trying to match up basically what we've collected at surface and what we're going to collect at surface. And then what's below it based on these IP surveys, a geophysical survey. And together we put together this surface and subsurface picture for ourselves of what do we think is going to be here when we drill down into it. So it's kind of like it's a staggered approach to exploration that's pretty methodical. Instead of just going and blindly drilling, 
let's let's spend some more cost effective methods of exploration before actually going out and drilling. So we give ourselves the best chance to get hits when we do drill. So exploration print program is moving along well. Soil sampling is supposed to start in early summer once there's spring thaw, and we take it from there. So let's talk M&A, uh, which I know is a favorite subject that. of yours. Uh, and, and we, you know, we've seen you busy over the last 12 to 14 months, adding on some tuck in acquisitions, as you call it to, to golden rose. Um, you know, I, I know you said you were on an M and a road show. So what, what, what can you tell me, uh, about what we should expect over the coming weeks and, and months to come and uh, as much as you can divulge there. Sure. Uh, M and a is one of my favorite topics. I'm a securities emerges lawyer by training. So, I mean, that's somewhere I can add value separate from what our exploration team who's very diligent is doing at the property level. Um, we you know, it's particularly last summer, we had a pretty aggressive acquisition spree at the property, staking options and outright purchases. We more than doubled the size of Golden Rose in the span of about three months last summer between May when we picked it up and I'd say about July. And then we even did a small additional acquisition in December. So we, we've almost reached the limits of what we can do in terms of expanding Golden Rose with land that we still want to acquire. There's right. a couple other things, you know, we are looking at. And so we'll pursue them if they make sense to build up the Golden Rose property package. Um, at the corporate level as well is where it starts to get a bit more, not only is it sensitive, but also it's like, what makes sense for the company, right? What is a, what is a value enhancing move for the company that both sets it up on stable financial footing going forward. Uh, that also diversifies our property portfolio so that our investors have, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, exposure spread across multiple properties. And at the same time, it's not too dilutive to our shareholders relative to, let's say a financing and going it alone or even just finding other ways to finance the company. Um, so, you know, I do continue to have, I guess, discussions with our, with other companies. Uh, I generally like to make it a practice of speaking with our neighbors in Newfoundland, just to get to know people, look for opportunities for operational collaboration, as well as potential M&A down the road. And so it was just uh, last week that I was in both Calgary and Vancouver to, to meet with the CEOs of a couple of our different neighbors. Um, you know, at this point, kind of more exploratory because we've, we've still been in the process of getting out all our drill results from this program. But as the year goes on and our exploration further firms up, you know, the, the potential of the property, and certainly by the time we're getting to drilling, I think will be a very interesting time to be going a bit more seriously and concretely to some other parties about whether it makes sense to, to look at combinations on a corporate level. But it's right. certainly we're looking for transactions that we think will, will stabilize and improve the company. Very exciting. So any, any uh, final words, uh, Joel, on true for us? I, I think what's great really is we are, you know, we believe in ourselves and our ability to execute. Not only do we have a demonstrated track record over at this point, the last year and a half in terms of closing major transactions, raising capital, and then doing the exploration we said we we're going to do. But I mean, if you go and look at our regulatory filings, we have a number of our members of management and the board have been picking up shares pretty consistently over the last several months, including just me last week with uh, probably about 65,000 shares. So we're betting on ourselves heavily and, you know, we welcome other people to, to watch along or to bet alongside us.